Hey all. So, as an atheist, there are some arguments against particular gods that I obviously find compelling, but I don't want to get into those right now. Right now, I want to point out some of the worst arguments against God and why they're bad, even though some atheists still use them today. If we want to have better arguments, we probably need to abandon the worst ones. So let's go ahead and roll the intro footage. So, first off, how many times have you heard the question, can God create a stone so heavy he can't lift it? Usually when this question is posited, it ends in saying that if he can't lift the stone, he's not all-powerful, since he can't lift a stone, and therefore cannot do something that an all-powerful God should be able to do. And if he can lift it, he's therefore incapable of creating a rock that is too heavy for him to lift. I've heard this argument countless times, and again, as an atheist, I think that every time someone cites this argument these days, I can hear the theist audibly roll their eyes from this end of my screen. The solution to this particular problem is very simple. Most apologists nowadays posit that the Christian God can do all things that are logically possible. It is not logically possible for God to fail, ergo, he cannot make himself fail by either creating the rock or being incapable of creating it. This does not strip this particular God of logical omnipotence, as that type of omnipotence in recent years has been redefined. We can't just brush this aside by saying that you're redefining your God, because by doing that we're dismissing the fact that the argument for omnipotence has evolved. Our arguments need to evolve as well. This issue of omnipotence can have better arguments against it, but the rock-lifting one is old, unrefined, and in my opinion, dead. The second argument that I would really like to stop hearing is that theists are somehow insane. Let me be clear, if someone makes a statement that someone else hearing voices in their head may need to seek medical help, that in and of itself is fine in my book. That isn't an argument in and of itself, and in many cases can be a sign that that particular atheist genuinely thinks that you might need to actually seek help, and there could be serious underlying issues that need to be resolved here. In this case, if the theist did in fact have a mental problem, religion only expedited the problem by giving a potential source for the voice in their head from their point of view. The religion itself though, as is so often stated, is not a mental illness. Conflating God belief with mental illness does no favors for the atheist argument, and it equally does no good for the theist who would immediately take it as an insult. Moreover, it's definitely a misrepresentation of mental illness on the whole. When someone feels insulted, it is more common for mental barriers to show themselves in full force, negating any possible constructive conversation that you may have once had. How many times did you feel like continuing a conversation with someone once they degraded you as part of their conversation? conversation point. Probably not very often. In short, religion is not a mental illness. The mental illness comes first, and then religion provides a scapegoat after the fact. Attacking the religion specifically, in this case, won't actually solve the problem, if there is one. Moreover, if someone is in their right mind and you tell them that religion is a mental condition, especially theirs, you will be doing yourself the same disservice in conversation, as the same exact barriers will be put up once you take the conversation down this route. The third argument that I've heard a lot is that religious people are irrational. This really isn't the case. I've met several rational theists. It's fine to believe that religion is irrational in and of itself. I personally think that being religious is not a rational position, but I would not call someone that I'm talking to on the subject an irrational person. And there's a few reasons why. Firstly, someone may have gotten to a god belief purely by rational reasons. We see this all the time through philosophy and astronomy. In these cases, someone legitimately thought long and hard about a subject and got to a god belief at the end of the process. To me, that is in and of itself rational. Presupposing god, on the other hand, is entirely irrational. For a good example of this, please watch a debate between Saiten Bergentate and literally anyone. You'll be able to see what I mean very quickly. Along these lines, I would also like to point out that the argument that theists are being stupid is equally fallacious. Throughout time, many of our sciences have been pioneered by theists. A lot of strides in mathematics came from Islamic scholars, and even the Big Bang was proposed originally by a Catholic bishop. 
See, there's this thing called compartmentalization that our brain is quite good at. In many cases, our brain can compartmentalize a god belief completely separate from our other, more rational beliefs. As a result, someone can maintain being a rational person even with a god belief. The belief itself can be irrational and that can lead to a conversation, but one person is not inherently irrational or stupid or any other derogatory adjective because of their belief. And I don't think using this inflammatory terminology towards other individuals helps our conversation at all. Finally, the last argument that I would really like to stop hearing is who created God? This is usually in response to the unmoved mover argument for the cause of the beginning of the universe as we know it, and out of all of the arguments possible, I think that I find this one to be the weakest. The problem here is that if a theist is describing their god as a timeless being, ergo it didn't have a beginning, then the conversation has to start there. That god, by definition, does not require a cause, and so you now have to tackle the problem from that angle. Changing the angle of attack, like asking who caused God is moving the conversation away from better, more constructive angles. Questions such as why God decided to cause the universe, for instance, while still not terribly strong in its own right, is still a better argument than trying to posit that the creator of the universe that a theist is arguing for needs to be redefined. Consider the issue that I had with the first argument about lifting rocks. The omnipotent God was redefined because it was defeated on its own merits. The same has to be done with a timeless god. You cannot defeat this argument by shifting the conversation away from the god idea originally posited, because if it helps you dominate the conversation currently, it will not necessarily mean that that particular argument for god won't still stand. And if you do in fact shift the conversation away from this god, then that particular type of god will still stand as an idea that has been unchallenged, just avoided. My goal with this video was not to provide knockout arguments in substitution of these, because in my eyes there is no knockout magic bullet argument against theism. Every conversation is different in its own way and requires nuance. Not all theists believe in the same type of god, and thus must be approached in different ways. Moreover, those angles of approach must be constructive, lest we isolate ourselves into individual echo chambers, because the other side doesn't want to have a civil conversation. To flip the tables here, how does it feel as an atheist when a theist proclaims that you just want to sin or you just hate God? I'm sure it doesn't make you consider their arguments anymore. It's the exact same thing when we use tired old arguments against theists. This is how it feels whenever we use arguments that have been refuted a thousand times very well. We've made the case several times that not all atheists just want to sin, and in fact some of us don't even have a working definition of that word. The same can be said about something like the omnipotence problem. If you're arguing the problem of omnipotence with somebody whose working definition of God has nothing to do with what you're arguing, you're simply going to be talking past each other and you won't be having a constructive conversation. So please, know what you're arguing for and know if that argument has been refuted before and why. We have to start digging deeper than surface level arguments. With that said everyone, if you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't, and please consider supporting my channel on Patreon. You guys are the whole reason I'm even able to do this right now at the frequency that I do, and I appreciate all of the help. Links to Discord and other methods of connecting with me will be in the description below. And as always everyone, insert end of video tagline here.